Hi guys, so I bought a Moxie. I'll tell you all about it. So I've been looking into this for a little while. You might have heard me previously say, oh, one day I'll get a long arm. That's what this is. It's a kind of, um, what do you call it? Entry level, that's what you call it. Entry level long arms. So it's got a 15 inch throat space. So much smaller than a lot of other ones you've probably seen, um, but it's also cheaper and it's been marketed for home sewers as opposed to people who are doing long arming as a business or something like that. Um, and I suppose I thought when I did it, like I hadn't really looked into long arms before, to be honest, I just sort of had it as a pipe dream, like every quilter, right? <laughs> and then I saw this probably on YouTube, who knows? Um, and started watching like all the handy quilter videos, Moxie's made by handy quilter, uh, and found that it was not like it, it's still expensive okay but it's not like as expensive as the ones that are probably were entry level maybe a couple years ago or something like that so so here in the uk you can get the moxie and an eight foot loft frame for just under five thousand pounds i opted for the bigger frame so is it like a two foot extension to make it like a 10 foot frame because i figured like if you're gonna buy a long arm then Surely the point is that you can quilt bigger quilts than you could on your domestic. So <laughs> anyway, so I paid more like five and a half thousand pounds. And I bu also bought an additional like ruler kit, which I haven't even tried yet because I literally just got this on Thursday. And I'm going to tell you about <laughs> um, how long it took me to build it as well. Uh, anyway, so I've really just been playing around on it. I'm, I, you know, I'm still at the very beginning stages of my journey with this machine so so i've scooched myself in behind here <laughs> this is where i used to sit and take a lot of my videos i had a bench along here that fit perfectly in this window but um choosing to make this purchase i've had to obviously give up some of the space in my room that was one of the things that i wasn't sure about in terms of when i was saying oh a long arm is for well in the future it was because i thought really there wasn't going to be enough space in this room i did the measuring it was tight, but I had the space. So I decided to give it a go. So why did I make this purchase now? There wasn't like a big sale on or anything like that. Um, I mean, there was a little sale on the ruler pack, but <laughs> that wasn't really the deciding factor. Um, I'm not sure exactly why. Um, I guess, you know, you probably, if you've seen some of my videos, you'll know I'm a little bit impetuous. So if I get an idea into my head, I'm more likely to run with it than not. <laughs> um, but also, yeah, I've only been quilting for, what, two and a half years? Um, so, and if you've seen my video from, I don't know, a month or two ago about my struggles with a Bernina machine that I had, not a long arm, like a regular uh, quilting sewing machine, you might be like, um, you were saying the learning curve on that was too much for you, and now you bought a long arm, what are you doing, girl? <laughs> but, um, you know, if you never try, you'll never know. And the sooner you start, the sooner you'll get better. So. Am I intimidated by this machine? Yes, I am. <laughs> am I nervous every time I turn it on still? Yes, but um, if I don't do it and I don't try it, I'll never get better and I'll never know. So here's a wider view of how the frame fits into the room. Um, and then I'll just sort of pan round so you can see where everything else has been shoved, including the bench that was in front of the window. Um, I've just reoriented where the sewing machine is maybe kind of hard to see with this pan, but anyway, I've just moved things around. It's, uh, I've definitely given up some space, but, and I obviously have to tidy again <laughs> after, but um, it fits, it fits. Um, so that's the key thing. Um, uh, it definitely dominates the back of the room though, for sure. This is just the um, uh, handy quilter test fabric that they give you. I got a pack of um, fabric and different threads to try and things like that. And there was also another, sort of bag of little extras from Pinhole Quilting, which is the shop in the UK that I bought it from. So they're in the UK, um, but they're down in England. So they're not near me in Scotland, but they, you know, I was emailing them. They said they've got lots of um, customers in Scotland and things like that. So, and they've been really good with communication and it arrived pretty quickly. So I've kind of unrolled it here. Um, I'm not that good at going backwards yet. So it's, it's, it's not taught right now. I'm just showing you because this was like my first pass up here of practicing and the second down here and then this, the bit of the third one that I started last night. So I've, I've not been on it loads. I've just been on it in drips and drops, um, you know, as I build up my confidence with it. So let me just scooch on so you can see that better. 
Um, so this top one, it, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, maybe if I hold it closer, but if you, when I, actually when I roll it up, you can see I had tension issues right away when I was trying to, oh, let me get that closer, hang on. When I was trying to bait, do like a basting stitch and then, and then it still doesn't look great <laughs> as I progressed along. But I fiddled with it and it started to look a little bit better in terms of tension. I still think I need to figure out more about how, how I even managed to write a few things. Um, yeah, I still have to figure out, you know, what speed it needs to go at and what how many stitches per inch for it to look the way that I would um, expect it to. So but I still haven't had my Zoom session with pinhole quilting yet. If I was closer to them, I could do like a whole foundation day for free, but I'm not. Um, so I don't know, but, um, but I've got a list of questions for them already. So, um, hopefully I will be able to have that soon. So I'm just going to show you some practice stitching. Um, some of it is, um, activities that are, uh, kind of recommended by handy quilter to start off with, like all those E's and L's at the top that I did before. And they talk about doing meandering with stars and hearts and things. Um, but I'll also talk about, um, the reasons why, uh, I wanted a long arm, um, just while we're watching this. Um, the first one was basting. I don't want to, who likes basting, right? I, I did. Um, and it did, you know, knowing that you have to baste a quilt for me causes a lot of procrastination in finishing it. I usually push through it, but it's still annoying. So the idea of being able to skip that and just, obviously you still have to pin the quilt and to the leaders and things like that. Um, there's not nothing there, but you don't have to do it on your hands and knees. And it's definitely, even just loading this practice piece of fabric, I could tell it's going to be easier. Um, and the other one is just like being able to quilt something larger than what I feel like I can manage through my domestic machine. I have done a queen size quilt, quilt as you go, but even that, you know, had its challenges. Um, so with this, um, frame extension, I think I can do a, a king size, um, which I've never done, you know? Um, so the idea of being able to do bigger quilts, being able to quilt faster, all of those things was really the draw for me so that I can just do more, quilt more, you know, that, <laughs> that's the basic idea. Um, so this is just, I'm just showing you some of the, um, you know, things I'm practicing on here. I'm just trying to get comfortable with moving the machine around, all of that kind of stuff. There's no real rhyme or reason to any of it, but <laughs> um, I was having fun with it. And um, obviously a practice piece of fabric, you can just do whatever and not worry about how ridiculous it looks. Obviously this isn't something I would, I would quilt on a, an actual quilt, but um, a good way to practice. And this I love right off the bat that I've been able to um, like write, like handwrite. Um, I have tried that free motion quilting on a domestic and it just doesn't work the same. But so, I mean, my handwriting is not the neatest uh, when it's on paper, but <laughs> anyways, it was fun to do it on the long arm. So I'm sure I'll be using that for, if I can get it like smaller, if I can practice enough and get it smaller, I can, I can see that being labels, you know, instead of doing a separate label, maybe putting that into the quilting somewhere or something like that. Um, or maybe I could, or maybe I could quilt labels separately and then sew them on or anyway, my mind's going now. There's all sorts of stuff you can do on a long arm in terms of smaller projects and things as well. So, um, yeah, I'm having, I'm looking forward to playing, but right now I, I still do have, um, a bit of the nerves using it. So I need that to kind of ease off with practice. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but I can see some little pink bits sort of poking out the top and pink is the color of my um bobbin thread so I, I probably my tension still needs some work so i've got lots of practice go but um yeah anyway i'm enjoying playing with it at the moment and trying to you know get familiar with um how it all works this bit is a bit i'm still not sure this so this is the controls you press on i'm trying not to get my hand in the way here plus and minus to go to like the menu. And then the only one I've really been looking at this, I've only done cruise, which is when it keeps on going. And I know that the 18, which is just what it was on when it, when it turned on was, uh, is how many stitches per inch, I believe, I think. 
and then I'm not sure what the number is underneath, but I've, I th I'm pretty sure it's to do with the speed and I've put that up a bit because I imagine I like to go fast. There's manual and then precision. I don't, I'm going to have to ask about these when I get on the call with some um, pinhole coating or go back. I'm sure I've seen a YouTube video about it. I just can't remember completely. So anyway, I will have to figure all that out. Complete newbie, obviously. So um, yeah, I'll just, so there, I'm just selecting it and then I can kind of change that. It was set at 100 when I got it. I changed it. I couldn't tell whether it made a difference to the stitching or not. So I'm just going to leave it for now. Um, so I might be fiddling with that. And there's obviously other things you can control and there's the needle up down. It's not a touch screen. You do use the handles. So these are the controls up there and there. So yeah, so that's my first, my third time stitching on the Moxie. That's what that was. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so um, it's kind of a mess behind me. Just excuse that. <laughs> I've basically been spending all weekend building the loft frame and setting up the Moxie and stuff. Um, so it arrived on Thursday, um, but I had a kind of busy day on Thursday. Uh, I had my youngest son home with me. Most of the days I didn't get to do very much. I kind of was able to escape every now and again when he was playing and unwrap things. Um, so I kind of, I guess I got everything out of the boxes on Thursday. And then uh, of course, the day I get a new toy delivered, I had a dinner date with a friend. <laughs> so um, I did do the first two or three steps on the instructions um, on Thursday night. So there's, as well as the written instructions, there's an app, you've, if you've watched any other videos about the Moxie, I'm sure you've heard about it. It's called the Built App. So it shows you how to set up the loft frame and also the Moxie. And the estimate is that it would take two people one hour to set up the eight foot loft frame. So without the, um, without the two foot extension, but uh, that bit really isn't that different to setting up the rest of it. But, um, but I chose not to invite my husband to help me with this because, <laughs> because when we try and build flat pack or really anything, we have big fights. It doesn't work, it doesn't work out. So I did um, ask him to come in for one or two things. I can't remember what they were, um, where I kind of just needed an extra set of hands. But otherwise, I did build it all myself. Um, so I got a little start Thursday night. Friday morning, I had to myself. So I think I had two, maybe two or three hours on it Friday morning. Then I had to pick up my older son from school. He started school and they randomly have half days on Fridays in Edinburgh. I don't know why. Anyway, <laughs> so... So I couldn't work on it Friday afternoon and then Friday evening, I, I spent a good, I'm going to say three or four hours doing it. So I think by the end of Friday night, it was, the frame was set up and the machine was, the Moxie was on the carriage, um, which is the thing that moves it back and forth and side to side. Um, but I hadn't done the leaders or threaded it or anything like that. So yeah, Saturday afternoon maybe even evening I can't remember I was putting like the there's like velcro that goes on the poles that you attach the leaders to and all that stuff and then getting the machine threaded attaching the handlebars I lost a washer inside and I had to like email <laughs> the, the guy from pinhole quilting to say is this going to cause a problem so I didn't find the washer it seems okay anyway uh so I met I eventually ended up doing my first pass of like practice stitching on Saturday night and then I think I did a second um, pass of stitching on Sunday, as well as playing with the tension on Sunday, sort of watching videos about how to do that and learning how to use the bobbin winder and stuff like that. So, and then so today is Monday and you saw the third kind of pass there of just playing with it. So I'm still a little bit nervous of it every time I turn it on. <laughs> and I still obviously have to sort out the settings and how best to use it and everything like that. So I'm not ready to put a quilt on there yet. Um, I'm probably gonna do a bit more practicing um, and then see when, wh one, when I can schedule the Zoom with pinhole quilting and also when they recommend, because I don't know whether they would say I should have it right away or whether I should practice more and get more questions for them. So I don't know, I'll see what they say. And then I, I've got three quilt tops ready. Um, to be kind of ones I don't care too much about <laughs> that I can um, sort of practice. So I made two really quick ones, which I might talk about in another video. And then one is the the larger like black and pink and green one. If you remember seeing that, that I cut up 
to be a charity quilt. So it's kind of double sided. So half of it's the front and half of it's the back. Um, so I might leave that one to last because obviously that one's getting given to someone. So, you know, don't want it to be a mess. <laughs> so um, I'll practice on my two other quilt tops that I just made super speedily in anticipation of the moxie arriving. Um, so a couple of th other things just to mention um, was that you can get um, add-ons for the machine that can do various things. I'm not, oh, by the way, I'm not, I didn't say this earlier, I probably should have. I'm not any kind of an affiliate, any kind of an ambassador, any kind of anything like that for Moxie or Handy Quilter or Pinhole Quilting or anyone. I bought this with my own money. It's just something I purchased. So um, just to make that clear. Um, but the thing that I, the things that I didn't purchase for it that you can, there's like a table topper thing, which is like some black um, inserts that go in the back of the frame where you can put, um, I think, pantographs and groovy boards and things like that. I didn't buy that. Um, the two foot extension came with like one piece of table topper. So it's kind of useful as a little shelf, but, <laughs> but that's all I've got. Um, and I didn't buy the quilt from the back kit, which is like handlebars at the back and whatever else it is you need to do pantographs and things like that. And of course I also didn't buy Pro Stitcher Lite, which is the kind of computerized bit that you can get for the Moxie. Um, so if you wanted to do like computerized designs and things like that, um, it would have cost about the same, I think, as the, as the Moxie in the loft frame to buy the Pro Stitcher Lite again. So it would have doubled the price. And I don't, I'm not really all that interested in it anyways. I kind of want, mostly wanted it to, um, allow me to quilt bigger quilts. Obviously I've tried, you've maybe seen, if you've seen some of my videos before, you've seen I've tried to quilt as you go, and that's definitely another good solution, but um, you know, this is another way, so I wanna try this. Um, I also wanna just use it to get better at free motion quilting and ruler work, and that's the kind of stuff I'm interested in. If I wanted to do something with minimal effort, I would probably use, it comes with a channel lock, like a manual one that you put over the wheel, so you could just do straight line quilting. I'm kind of excited about that because, <laughs> because my straight lines when I'm quilting are not always that straight. So um, I think that would be cool for like modern quilts, you know, doing just like just lots of straight lines that I imagine you could finish it pretty quick. So that would be exciting too. Um, so yeah, so I don't think that this channel is going to become a long arm quilting channel. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, uh, show you my journey. I'm obviously a beginner, so I can't, you know, uh, all I can show you is kind of where I'm starting from, which was today. And then if I do other videos um, on the Moxie in future, you'll kind of see how I'm progressing and, and kind of get an idea of what that might look like for you. If you're kind of on the fence, I can be your little guinea pig. <laughs> you can see how long the learning curve is and if I'm still struggling with it. Um, but if you're looking for resources, just now I can recommend the Handy Quilter uh, YouTube channel. They've got loads of Moxie videos and um, loads of other videos about um, long arm machines and long arm quilting in general. So I've been watching a lot of those <laughs> in anticipation of this pinhole quilting where I bought it also has a number of videos as well. Um, and I'm sure there are other channels. I know there are other channels. So um, I'm sure you can find something. So this is really more, um, if you're looking for like a beginner journey or to see a quilter who's a little bit more like you, maybe um, experiencing the machine, then that's probably the kind of videos that I will have about the Moxie, but I will have other videos too. So if you've got no interest in long arms, don't worry, I'm not gonna get obsessed with only filming long arm <laughs> quilting videos. Um, so yeah. So I hope you enjoyed seeing um, my new toy. <laughs> And uh, if you like videos like this, and please do subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and leave me a message. Let me know what you thought. Thanks so much for spending time with me. Hope to see you next time. Bye.